Three Brothers, Jewel, from Wikipedia, the Free Encyclopedia, at en.wikipedia.org. The Three Brothers, also known as the Three Brethren, German, Drei Brüder, French, Les Trois Frères, was a piece of jewelry created in the late 14th century, which consisted of three rectangular red spinels arranged around a central diamond. The jewel is known for having been owned by a number of important historical figures. After its commission by Duke John the Fearless of Burgundy, the jewel was part of the Burgundian crown jewels for almost 100 years before passing into the possession of German banker Jakob Fugger. The brothers were eventually sold to Edward VI and became part of the crown jewels of England from 1551 to 1643. They were worn prominently by Queen Elizabeth I and King James VI and I. In the early 1640s, Henrietta Maria, wife of Charles I, attempted to sell the jewel to raise funds for the English Civil War, but it is unclear if she succeeded. Its whereabouts after 1645 remain unknown. Description the three brothers remained essentially unchanged over more than 250 years. The jewel is known to have been reset at least once in 1623, but a variety of descriptions indicate that its original form and composition were retained over its entire lifespan. Originally made as a shoulder clasp or pendant, it consisted of three rectangular red spinels, then known as balas rubies, of 70 carats each in a triangular arrangement, separated by three round wide pearls of 10 to 12 carats each, with another 18 to 20 carats pearl suspended from the lowest spinal. The middle of the pendant was a deep blue diamond weighing about 30 carats in the shape of a pyramid, octahedron, or regular trisoctahedron. As there is little evidence for diamond cutting before 1400, it is likely the jeweler had merely squared off, described as carré on the original invoice, its natural form. When the brothers made their first appearance in an inventory, that of Duke Philip the Good of Burgundy in 1419, the jewel was described as, quote, a very fine and rich buckle adorned in the middle with a very big pointed diamond, and around this are three fine square ballast stones called the Three Brothers, and three sizable fine pearls in between these. Under this buckle hangs a very large fine pearl in the shape of a pear." End quote. In 1587, the Three Brothers were listed among jewels delivered to Elizabethan courtier Mary Radcliffe and described as, quote, a fair flower of gold with three great ballasses in the middest, a great pointed diamond and three great pearls fixed within a fair pearl pendant called the Brethren." End quote. Early History The jewel was commissioned by Duke John the Fearless of Burgundy in the late 1380s and was one of the most precious treasures of the House of Burgundy. It was created by Parisian goldsmith Hermann Roussel in 1389. A bill and receipt of the work can be found in the Côte d'Or departmental archives in Dijon. After receiving it in the 1390s, Duke John pawned the jewel in 1412, but redeemed it at some point before 1419. When the Duke, who was a major figure in the Armagnac Burgundian civil war over the French throne, was assassinated during a parley with the French Dauphin, the future King Charles VII, in 1419, the brothers were passed down to his son, Philip the Good. The jewel remained in Burgundy during Philip's reign and was inherited by his son, Charles the Bold, on his death in 1467. Charles commanded one of the most powerful armies of his time, and traveled to battles with an array of priceless artifacts as talismans, including carpets belonging to Alexander the Great, the bones of saints, 
the Sancy Diamond and the Three Brothers. In his conflict with the old Swiss Confederacy during the Burgundian Wars, Charles suffered a catastrophic rout in March 1476 when he was attacked outside the village of Concise in the Battle of Grandson. Forced to flee in haste, Charles left behind his artillery and an immense booty, including his silver bath, the ducal seal and the brothers, all of which were looted from his tent by the Confederate army. The pendant was eventually sold to the magistrates of the city of Basel, who had the piece assessed by a Venetian expert. The city also commissioned a watercolor miniature of it, which provides the earliest visual record of the brothers, as of 2020 in the Basel Historical Museum. The jewel disappeared from view during the next years, as the magistrates feared that the House of Habsburg, inheritors of the Duchy of Burgundy, would reclaim goods that they considered as having been stolen from Charles. The jewel was at last put on the market in 1502, with two magistrates acting as straw men for the city to ensure plausible deniability. In 1504, Basel succeeded in selling the three brothers to Augsburg banker Jakob Fugger after a year of negotiations. A merchant by trade, Fugger had become one of the wealthiest individuals in history by dealing in textiles and metals and through extending loans to the Habsburg dynasty. The Basel sale included the brothers and three other pieces of jewelry from Charles's hoard, the Federlin Little Feather, the Gürtelin Little Garter, and the White Rose, for a total price of 40,200 florins. At the time, enough to pay 3,300 common laborers for a year. While this constituted a significant expense, Fugger made many such transactions over the years, and the price pales in comparison to his total assets, which reached more than 2 million guilders at his death in 1525. For Fugger, Jewelry and precious stones were a highly fungible capital reserve and an investment to be sold at a profit to the right client. In fact, Fugger already had Emperor Maximilian I in mind as a buyer when he purchased the brothers, but the latter balked at the exorbitant asking price and bought everything but the pendant. The jewel stayed with the Fuggers for several decades. When Johann Jakob Fugger commissioned a history of the House of Habsburg in 1555, the three brothers were still described as a, quote, treasure known to all Christendom, end quote, that the Fuggers had owned. However, Jakob Fugger's nephew Anton Fugger, who was now running the family business, had decided to liquidate part of the family's possessions by the 1540s. He first unsuccessfully offered the brothers to King Ferdinand I and Emperor Charles V, while a bid from the Ottoman Sultan Suleiman the Magnificent was refused because Anton did not want the jewel to fall into non-Christian hands. When continental Christian kings could not be convinced to buy the jewel, the Fuggers turned to King Henry VIII, who had been conferred the title Defender of the Faith in 1521. As a Renaissance monarch, Henry was expected to live in grandeur, and the king consequently had a passion for jewels. Between 1529 and 1532, Henry spent almost 11,000 pounds on jewelry, equivalent to around 7 million pounds in 2019. As early as 1544, a letter from the Fugger office in Antwerp mentioned the imminent departure of an employee with jewels to be sold to Henry. However, negotiations dragged on until Henry died in 1547 and were only concluded in May 1551 under his successor, the 14-year-old Edward VI. In his diary, the king wrote that he was actually forced to buy the jewel from Antony Fulker, Anton Fugger, for the princely sum of a hundred thousand crowns because the monarchy owed the Fugger's bank 60,000 pounds equivalent to around 21 million pounds in 2019. The transaction was recorded in an update to the inventory of Henry VIII of England, after which the brothers became part of the crown jewels of England. As an English crown jewel. 
Edward left the pendant with his Lord High Treasurer William Paulette for safekeeping on 7th of June 1551. In 1553, it was decided to gift the brothers to Edward's half-sister Mary on the occasion of her wedding to Prince Philip of Spain in 1554. The jewel is described in a list of items delivered to Mary on 20th September 1553 as, quote, a great pendant bought of the Fokkers in Flanders, having three large ballaces set without foil, one large pointed diamond, and three large pearls, whereof one is pendant, end quote, which indicates that it had seen very few, if any, alterations since John the Fearless had commissioned it more than 150 years earlier. King Edward died before Mary's marriage, who in turn took the throne under controversial circumstances and inherited the bulk of her father Henry VIII's jewelry, including the brothers. At the time of her accession, German historian Peter Lambeck, grandson of Johann Jakob Fugger, wrote of his hope that Mary's marriage to Philip would bring the three brothers back to the continent and into possession of the Habsburgs, but she seemed to mostly ignore the pendant in favor of gifts from her husband. After a reign of only five years, Mary died in 1558. The jewel made a reappearance during the reign of her successor, Elizabeth I. Much like her father, Henry VIII, Elizabeth knew when and how to use ostentatious displays of wealth and evidently liked the showy red and white piece of jewelry with the unusual triangular arrangement. The queen wore it as part of her crown jewels on several occasions, and it is prominently featured in at least two portraits of her. First in the ermine portrait, circa 1585, today in Hatfield House, a tribute to Nicholas Hillard, in which the brothers appear suspended from a massive pearl-studded carcanet or necklace dramatically offset against a black dress. And second, on the lesser-known Elizabeth I of England holding an olive branch, circa 1587, by an unknown painter, originally given to the Navarrese diplomat François de Civille, where the pendant takes pride of place as the only significant piece of jewelry worn against a richly decorated white dress. Elizabeth died in 1603 at the end of a 45-year reign, by which time the jewel had become so tied to her persona that when a marble monument to her was erected in Westminster Abbey in 1606, a replica of the brothers was made part of her tomb effigy. The element was fully restored in 1975. On Elizabeth's death, the jewel passed to her successor, James I, who had ruled in Scotland as James VI until his accession. In 1606, the three brothers were listed in an inventory of the monarch's possessions amongst those jewels, quote, never to be alienated from the crown, end quote. The pendant was a favorite of James, who refashioned it into a hat jewel. A portrait of James produced around 1605 by court painter John de Critz shows the brothers in great detail as the king wore it with a pearl-studded band on a black hat. He wore other crown jewels in a similar fashion, such as the Mirror of Great Britain. Towards the end of James' reign, the jewel was reset, possibly for the first time since its creation. In 1623, James's son and heir apparent Charles was sent on an incognito mission to Spain to negotiate a marriage between himself and the Infanta Maria Ana of Spain in a diplomatic maneuver known as the Spanish Match. Opulent jewelry was to be brought on the trip in an attempt to impress Philip III of Spain and convince him to give his daughter's hand in marriage. Crown jeweler George Harriet worked four days and nights to reset the chosen pieces of jewelry with a report on the 17th of March stating that he had taken, quote, the great pointed diamond out of the jewel called the Brethren, which he commandeth to be the most complete stone that he ever saw, end quote and which he valued at £7,000 on its own, equivalent to around £1.3 million in 2019. James wrote Charles on the same day that he would, quote, send you for your wearing the three brethren that you know full well, but newly set, end quote. 
Later History and Loss When the Spanish match failed to materialize and James died in March 1625, the newly crowned Charles I instead married French Princess Henrietta Maria. Charles continuously quarreled with the Parliament of England during his reign. One bone of contention was the divine right of kings, which led him to consider the crown jewels as his personal possessions. Charles was plagued by financial problems and had already pawned the brothers away in the Netherlands in 1626, redeeming them only in 1639. When the monarchy faced bankruptcy in mid-1640, Charles sent Henrietta to the continent to sell what she could of the crown jewels. The Queen arrived in The Hague on 11th March 1642, despite the protestations of Parliament that she had taken with her, quote, treasure in jewels, plate and ready money, end quote, that was likely to, quote, impoverish the state, end quote, and be used to foment unrest in Britain. However, Henrietta found that potential buyers were hesitant to touch important pieces, such as the three brothers, writing to her husband, quote, The money is not ready, for on your jewels they will lend nothing. I am forced to pledge all my little ones. End quote. By June, Sir Walter Earle reported to Parliament that the brothers were still unsold. It is at the end of Henrietta's trip in 1643 that the trail of the jewel begun to disappear. There is no record of her selling or pawning the pendant in the Netherlands, and it is likely that the brothers returned with her to England. As the country descended into the first English civil war between Charles and Parliament, Henrietta fled to Paris in 1644, where she again immediately attempted to raise funds. Once more, the local market showed little interest, but in early 1645, she succeeded in selling an unnamed piece of jewelry for the comparatively low price of 104,000 guilders. The piece was described as a, quote, pyramidal diamond, three balas rubies, four pearls, with the addition of a table-cut diamond of 30 carats and two pointed diamonds, end quote, which closely matches the original description of the three brothers, if it had been altered by adding smaller diamonds. However, there is no definite proof that this was the same item. A contemporary letter to Henrietta's secretary identifies two Hague jewelers and gemstone dealers, Thomas Kletcher and Joachim de Wickfort, as possible middlemen or buyers of the unnamed jewel. Kletcher, who would later become court jeweler to Frederick Henry, Prince of Orange, had already been involved in the pawning of the Mirror of Great Britain in 1625 and would therefore have been familiar to Charles and Henrietta. The fate of the brothers after 1645 is unknown. It has been suggested that the jewel was broken up or bought by French Chief Minister Cardinal Mazarin, a renowned jewel collector to whom Henrietta Maria was deeply indebted. There has also been speculation that the pendant was modified, creating a jewel called the Three Sisters in the process. The sisters were offered to Prince Frederick Henry around the time of Henrietta's sale in 1645. However, besides the possibly coincidental similarity in naming, there is no hard evidence to suggest that the brothers became the sisters. There has been no confirmed sighting of the jewel since. In popular culture, British author Tobias Hill published the novel The Love of Stones in 2001, which charts the lives of several real and fictional persons coming in contact with the three brothers. This sound file and all text in the article are licensed under the Creative Commons Attribution Share Alike 3.0 Unported License, available at creativecommons.org slash licenses slash buy hyphen s a slash 3.0